after studying this module you shall be able to learn the various ways in which religiosity and spirituality help in coping with negative life events identify the various coping techniques and patterns associated evaluate the relationship between religion and spirituality and analyze how coping with stressful situations involves interplay of various factors claims that prayer divine intervention or the ministrations of a healer can cure illness have been popular throughout history miraculous recoveries have been attributed to many techniques known as faith healing it can involve prayer a visit to a religious place or simply a strong belief in supreme being confessions also are assumed to lead to well being in pen baker's writing experiments confessions though increased tension and disconcert in the short term but enhanced physical health in the long run religion and spirituality are they same or different religion and spirituality are primarily a way of life they are as entwined with our culture as are our identities and even though their growth trends of atheism or rejecting any kind of supernatural force various cultural standards still believe and are taking forward the idea of religion and spirituality they continue to manifest in all aspects of our daily life religion and spirituality are essentially the same but also different some define spirituality as a smaller part of the larger construct of religion or to say spirituality as an aspect of religion others however would put it in the other way round saying that religion is just one aspect of spirituality however the real difference between religion and spirituality is that A religion is a system of belief in a higher unseen controlling power along with certain rites for worship spirituality is an awakening to the inner reality of one's being spirit or self and a longing to be in communion and union with it through experience this means a total transformation of the whole being of the individual spirituality emphasizes that you can experience your own spirit to be spiritual means to rise above the temptations of the body and the senses and to realize the final truth to be religious means to observe rituals and rites specific to one's religion many characteristics common to religion may also be found in spirituality and vice versa for example spirituality like religion may involve a personal transformation an encounter with transcendence or a search for ultimate truth or an ultimate reality that is sacred to the individual what is religious may also include stipulated behavior patterns and encouragement of adherence to certain religious practices or forms of expression characteristics that some forms of contemporary spirituality may resist still there is much overlap between these phenomena often however religion and spirituality go hand in hand big graph suggests there need be no tension between an inwardly appropriated faith and its external observance in that the latter naturally leads to the former and allen says that extrinsic religious behavior also follows in turn from intrinsic experiences of the faith indeed the two words are overlapping constructs that share some characteristics and personality factors thus the polarization of the two constructs into incompatible opposites has been criticized by researchers 
Hill A. All stated that both spirituality and religion are complex phenomena, multidimensional in nature, and any single definition is likely to reflect a limited perspective or interest. Either way, if we go ahead with religion and spirituality, being two sides of the same coin of when it comes to seeking their support, so as to deal with life stressor. When one expends conscious efforts to solve personal and interpersonal problems and seeks to master, minimize or tolerate stress or conflict, it is referred to as coping. The effectiveness of the same, however, depends on the type of stress or conflict, characteristics of the individual, his or her personal strengths and weaknesses, and of course on the situational factors. Types of coping Lazarus and Folkman stated that coping consists of cognitive and behavioral efforts to manage specific external and internal demands that are appraised as taxing or exceeding the resources of the person. Coping can be divided into different coping styles, mainly distinguishing between problem-focused and emotional-focused coping style. Problem-focused coping involves active efforts to manage the stressor itself. For example, getting more information about the problem and the options available to deal with it and it is normally chosen as a coping reaction when the individual appraises the situation as more controllable. Emotional focus coping refers to coping efforts that do not seek to directly solve the problem but to manage the negative emotions associated with the problem. For example, engaging in distracting activities, talking about the negative emotions, normally chosen as a coping reaction when the situation is appraised as less controllable. Additional coping styles later identified were Meaning focus coping, in which cognitive strategies are used in order to manage the meaning of the situation, drawing on values, beliefs and goals to modify the meaning of the situation, especially in case of chronic stress that cannot be amenable to problem focus efforts. And social coping. This refers to interpersonal coping. In other words, seeking social support. Appraisal and coping processes are influenced by the characteristics of the person and the environment. Characteristics that can influence a person's ability to appraise situations, realistically choose the appropriate coping strategy and use it effectively. The multiple dimensions of religious and spiritual coping. Social support sure proves beneficial in adjustment post any negative life event. And the social component of religion seems to positively influence adjustment. Among the bereaved, higher levels of religious participation has been associated with less depression and loneliness, as well as greater positive affect and optimism. Intrapsychic perspective. Religion and spirituality also influences coping process through beliefs and attitudes held by the believers. Maiton found a negative association between depressive symptoms and the belief that one receives personal support from one's God independent of social support. Cognitive processing. Religious and spiritual people have a schemata that may allow them to incorporate beliefs about death or for that matter any negative life event in a more familiar and less threatening manner. Studies have concluded that religious and spiritual individuals reveal low levels of anxiety, fear and concern about death. So it can be assumed that if religious people possess a cognitive structure that includes ways of thinking about death, such a schema should facilitate faster cognitive processing a loss or any such negative life event. 
Greater processing can be related to better acceptance and adjustment with the stressor. Finding meaning. Taylor proposed that the search for meaning is a major theme in the coping process. Meaning is often sought during crisis and finding meaning during misfortunes is associated with effective adjustment. Schematic conceptions of how the world works, for example, religious beliefs help create a reality that people anticipate. Even in the absence of objective environmental basis, the more religious and spiritual an individual is, the more prepared he or she may be to impose satisfactory meaning on a negative event. Also, having found meaning, he or she may be more likely to be successful in adjusting to and coping with the negative life event. Types of religious and spiritual coping methods Intercorrelated coping styles There definitely exists multidimensionality in religious coping, but it will also be noteworthy that religious and spiritual coping methods are moderately intercorrelated, which suggests that people do not make use of religious coping methods singly. They rather use them in combination with each other. For instance, in a factor analytic study, Boltrow, Gass, Ryan, Amral Melendez and Brantley distinguish between personally oriented and institutionally oriented combinations of religious coping methods. Another possible approach to the study of religious coping could be the study of patterns of religious coping. Rather than focusing on one method of religious coping in detail, it brings under its folds several methods of religious coping and their patterns of interrelationship. Breadth rather than depth is the approach to measurement and analysis here. This approach offers an economical way to measure a range of religious coping methods. One that may help to integrate the study of religious coping within mainstream theory and research in social and health sciences. Positive and negative religious coping. The pattern of positive religious coping methods is an expression of a sense of spirituality, a secure relationship with God, a belief that there is meaning to be found in life, and a sense of spiritual connectedness with others. The positive pattern consisted of several religious coping methods. Seeking spiritual support, religious forgiveness, collaborative religious coping, spiritual connection, religious purification, benevolent religious reappraisal and religious focus. In contrast, the negative religious coping pattern is an expression of a less secure relationship with God, a weak and gloomy view of the world and a religious struggle in the search for significance. This pattern would be defined by a very different set of religious coping methods like penalizing religious reappraisals, demonic religious reappraisals, reappraisals of God's powers, spiritual discontent, self-directing religious coping and interpersonal religious discontent. Thus, people appear to use various methods of religious coping in combination with each other. That is, they apply different configurations of religious thought, feeling, behavior and relationships in their efforts to deal with major life stressors. People draw on religious approaches that appear to be reflective of a secure relationship with God, a sense of spirituality and a trustworthy worldview. Negative religious coping methods are used but much less frequently than positive methods. These methods of coping are expressions of a different religious orientation. One involving a weak relationship with God, spiritual struggle and a threatening view of the world. 
outcomes of religious and spiritual coping. It is assumed that religion and spirituality play a positive role in providing a sense of identity, a network of social support and a coherent framework for responding to existential questions. It helps to cope with negative life events or chronic illness and also leads to a sense of shared understanding of a loss or trauma. It can also lead to protective effects against suicide or substance misuse. But on the other hand, people who take religion and spirituality a bit too seriously might exhibit poorer mental health as it can be judgmental alienating and exclusive and lead to stress or guilt through non-conformity. Mentally ill patients are at higher risk of mortality when they experience religious doubts. Patterns of coping The positive and negative religious coping patterns are related with different outcomes, particularly in the realm of mental health. Generally, Positive religious coping pattern is related to generous outcomes, which includes lesser symptoms of psychological distress, reports of psychological and spiritual growth as a result of the stressor, etc. In contrast, the negative religious coping pattern is associated with signs of emotional distress, such as depression, poorer quality of life, psychological symptoms and callousness towards others. Intensity of stress Religious coping appears to be particularly beneficial to individuals experiencing more stressful situations that push them beyond the capacity of the immediate resources. In such situations, people seem to recognize their limitations and call for more ultimate solutions. In such circumstances, religious coping may be more compelling. Prayer and coping Prayer is perhaps the most essential and personal of religious experiences. It is central to religion and religious experience. It is also highly spiritual. Even though prayer is central to religion and religious experience, it represents one of the core elements of spirituality. Prayer is thoughts, attitudes and actions designed to express or experience connection to the sacred. It is thereby used by many people to cope with various life situations. Paloma and Pendleton forwarded four basic types of prayer. First is meditative prayer, which is worshipping and adoring God, reflecting upon religious books, etc. Second is ritualistic prayer, for example, reading from a book of prayers. Third is petitionary prayer, wherein asking God for things for oneself and others. And last is colloquial prayer, that is thanking God, asking God for guidance, etc. Prayer and the severity of stress. Neighbors, they all found that as the severity of the stressors increased, the use of prayer for coping increased proportionately. People use prayer as a coping resource more frequently when their problems are more severe, intractable or unresponsive to conventional interventions. Hill A. all found that mothers in high violence areas were more inclined to use prayer to cope than were mothers in low violence areas. Thus, it is a robust human phenomenon for people to mostly pray when their needs are greatest and this extends across a wide variety of stressful human circumstances. Frequency of prayer and well-being Gruner found that frequency of prayer has been positively related to marital adjustment, general life satisfaction, existential well-being, lower delinquency and more positive attitude towards schooling among children and adolescents, as well as 
reduce fear of death among older adults. Prayer as stress buffer. Pergament found that frequent prayer appears in most studies as stress preventive. In other studies, frequent prayer appears to act as a stress buffer. That is, it prevents the negative effects of stress on measures of physical or mental health. Let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. Religion and spirituality are neither completely enmeshed nor segregated, but they are both an extremely important factor in our ways of dealing with stressful life situations. Coping is primarily of four types, but religious and spiritual coping takes place in an overlapping multidimensional way and involves discovery of the sacred. The religious and spiritual coping patterns can either be positive or negative and have various illustrative methods. Outcomes of such coping, however, do not take place in vacuum and have therefore many factors influencing them such as patterns of coping, intensity of stress, etc. Prayer is one primary component of religious and spiritual coping and acts as a stress buffer. People often resort to prayers when the stress factors are most severe. God can also be viewed as an attachment figure and a secure attachment often leads to positive patterns of coping.